All right, well, let's start with an example of an over-leveraged property. You'll see on your screen right now the property information sheet that we actually use to collect information from sellers. Now remember, in my case, and I hopefully in the near future of your case, a virtual assistant will be filling out this sheet for you and then sending it to you so then you can follow up. Let's take a look at it. In fact, what you're looking at here is a document that took me a lot of years to create, recreate, recreate, and finally today, it is designed so that uh, anyone can fill it out and, and know the right questions to ask to determine whether we're going to get terms or not. And I'll say it again. Our whole goal is to get terms because without terms, we're out of here. Get terms or get the door. We're never going to go look at a property unless the seller has acknowledged that they're either going to sell it for what they owe, lease purchase it, or sell it with owner financing. If we don't get a yes answer to one of those three questions, we have no reason to go any further. If you look down in the middle of your sheet, you'll see very simple wordage that allows your VA or you or someone working with you to ask those questions without having to remember them. The top of the page is all about the basic information. By the way, of course, we've redacted the critical information on these sheets to protect the innocent. Even though I've left the street on there, and the back basic facts, of course, I'm not going to print the cell phone of the seller or, or the street address. Take a look at the top, and you'll see that this seller is asking $350,000 for this house. In a minute, I'll show you a picture of it. And that the seller thinks it's worth about three hundred. dollars well, The seller seems to be asking more than what it's worth. Uh, well, why not? Maybe somebody will say yes. But in, uh, look down where it says your comps. This is where the student has written 275 or 285 because they've gone on sites like Zillow or Trulia or Redfin and looked at some comps to see what the houses were selling for in the neighborhood similar to our house, and that's what they came up with, which is good enough. From that, we've determined that the real market value of this property is about $280,000. Similar properties have sold in the same neighborhood recently for about the same price. So we got an R, as we call it, or after repaired value of $280,000. Now, if you look in the middle, you'll see that the loan balance, according to the seller, is $300,000, and the payment is about $2,000. And look right in that uh, down below on that block, and it says PITI. Yes, that stands for Principal, Interest, Taxes, and Insurance. Now, there's a reason there's a star off the side of that block. And that is because, my friend, this is critical information. You cannot determine what to do next if we don't learn what the loan balance is on the property and the monthly payment and if it's current or in arrears. And if it's in arrears, about how far in arrears. That block must be filled out, whether you're filling it out or whether your VA is filling it out. Now come right down below that. Now is where you get into the really cool scripts. If you look over to the left, it says... If the asking price and the loan balance are within $35,000, in other words, the seller is asking very little more than what he owes, then ask that question. And in this case, that question was asked because the seller thought it was worth about three hundred, dollars but he owed $300,000, which led the VA to believe that he'd sell it for what he owes. And if you look there, sure enough, he was right. Notice there's a check mark under that in that little, little block that says, yes, he'll sell it for what he owes. And he would at least purchase it. Look in the middle. It says, if we agree on a price and we accept all responsibility for future repairs, would you consider a lease purchase? He checked the yes there as well. So in this case, the right block doesn't uh, apply. Now look down below. Does it need repairs? No. That means the house is in excellent condition. Reason for selling? Because it's a rental property. That's good. The seller's not even living in it. Now, when do you want to move? Well, the tenant is moving this weekend. What would that tell us? It tells us that pretty soon the seller's going to have to start making the $2,000 payment again, and it's likely we've got some pretty good motivation to have a, a, a different exit strategy. Now look, this is a four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath, 2,500 square feet, beautiful house, beautiful neighborhood, exactly the kind that we want to work with. So by looking at this property information sheet, we immediately knew it's time to get this seller on the phone, verify the facts, and determine whether we wanted to go to the house or not. So now let's take a look at the script that we would use to call this seller back. 
You'll see it on your screen. It's labeled script to call back a FISBO with a yes on will you sell for what you owe. Do we have a yes on will you sell for what you owe? The answer is yes, we do. So let's read the script. Hi, John. This is Ron calling about your home you discussed with my assistant yesterday. Do you have a minute? I always like to give them a chance to tell me if they want to talk now instead of rudely interrupting. Okay, well, look, I've got all the facts here. and You've indicated you sell the house for what you owe on. Is that correct? Follow the lines down and you'll see if the seller says yes, which they did in this case. Well, your, your next answer is, okay, look, I can come see the house and likely buy it and close as soon as you're ready and pay closing costs, but the only way for me to do it is to take over your debt. That means I'll buy your house and make the payments when you and I agree at the start, but the loan will stay in your name until sometime in the future when I get it cashed out. Will that be a problem for you? My friend, if you will read that paragraph exactly like I wrote it, you'll find out it's usually not a problem for them, especially when they uh, owe more on the house than it's worth. Remember, this seller owes $300,000. It's only worth two seventy-five dollars or two eighty. dollars So does this seller have a problem? The answer is, of course. That's going to make them very, very motivated. Now follow the line on down. If, it, if there's no problem, then you see appointment script, which we're going to come back to in a second. But if there is a problem and they don't want to just give you the house and walk away and hope you'll make their payments, then we have another plan. Follow the arrow down to where it says, yes, that'll be a problem. Yes. Well, if that's an issue, I can also lease purchase it or buy it with owner financing and cover your payment with rent and handle all the repairs. Does that seem more appealing? If the answer is yes, you make an appointment. If the answer is no, get off the telephone after asking. So you're saying the only way you'll sell is if your loan is paid off? Because my friend, if the only way they will sell is if their loan is paid off, you can not help them. Let me say that again. You can not help them. So this now goes into the suspect pile, not the prospect pile. On your screen, you'll see a picture of the house. It's on Ribbon Road. The purchase price was a loan balance at the time we purchased it. You see, I didn't purchase it. I didn't agree to purchase it for the loan balance. Actually, I didn't agree to purchase it. I, I agreed to lease it with an option to buy for the loan balance at the time we purchased. Knowing full well that since he owed more on it than it was worth, I would not be staying in the deal for longer term. I agreed to purchase it for the loan balance at the time I, that it was cashed out, which means every single month that goes by, the loan balance is less and less. You see, my tenant buyer now is paying $2,200 a month for rent, which covers the seller's $2,200 principal, interest, taxes, and insurance payment. By the way, the property information sheet said it was $2,000, turned out to be $2,200. So all I did was find somebody who wants to live in the house with an option to buy the house and pay $2,200 a month rent. Therefore, the seller is getting their payment paid for as long as it takes that tenant buyer to go get a new loan and cash them out. But look at the bottom there. We received $15,000 from our tenant buyer as an assignment fee to assign them the contract and put them in our position and let them take over that lease for five years. This deal that you're looking at now is called an ACTS deal. A-C-T-S, or Assignment of Contracts and Terms System, which was invented about two and a half years ago now and has really changed our industry. For the first time, now we found a way to get paid on over-leveraged houses. And what a great service for the seller and for the buyer. If you'll notice, we kept the entire $15,000 plus the first month's rent. This, from, from the 30 days after the, the attorney closed the lease purchase agreement with our buyer, now our seller is collecting $2,200 a month directly from our buyer, and we're out of it and we got a, a release signed by the seller. So that's a pretty good example of a quick in and out. It did take 48 days because honestly, we turned down several buyers that we didn't like. Yeah, it is our responsibility to make sure that we put somebody in the house that looks like we can make the payments and finally, one did come along that we liked. So that, that deal is long gone. We made $17,200 and have no more responsibility to the house whatsoever.